Hello and welcome to the Steam Chamber. I'm your host, Lord Elemental, and this is another episode of Greenlight Highlights. And the first game we're looking at today is Delver's Drop, which is a procedurally generated retro RPG. Now, graphically speaking, it's somewhat reminiscent of Spelunky, only with a top-down view. Now, this game features up to eight zones of castle dungeons, each with four sub-levels to explore. The uh, levels are a mixture of handcrafted rooms and randomised content and floor layouts. That's where the procedural generation part comes in. Now, the combat is physics-based hack and slash, um, and they all the characters interact in a physics-based system. Therefore, you can use this to rather interesting effects when fighting. Now you've got multiple characters and play styles, you've got five classes, uh, some of which have not been decided yet. They have unique attributes such as speed and movement, weapons, special abilities and perk trees, giving this some real depth in terms of character development. Now there is a degree of character customization as you can gain experience as you play each class and you keep this as you progress through the class's perk tree, even if your current character dies. When you get a new character, level up if you want more flexibility, but it's completely grind free apparently, or so they say. The game also has some interesting puzzle elements which uh, look quite interesting. Now, yes, I'm aware this is another 2D RPG, and it's another retro style RPG. There's a lot of stuff out there at the minute that's very, very similar to this. There's a lot of stuff on green light that is 2D using 2D retro graphics. However, I do really think this one th brings something unique and something different to the table. So by all means, do check it out. Give it a vote if you like it. And buy it by all means. Now our next game is Teddy Floppy Ear Mountain Adventure. And this is billed as a family friendly point and click adventure. Now. I do enjoy points and clicks, which is one of the reasons I've chosen this game, and it does look quite polished. However, the main reason I've chosen this game is because it is billed as family friendly. Now, there's just not enough games on Steam at the minute that are billed as family friendly. Don't get me wrong, there are lots of games on there that would be appropriate for younger members of the family, but there's not many that are aimed specifically at that branch, which is a real shame because gamers range from, you know, for toddlers to grown adults and it's great sometimes to be able to sit down with your kids and play something together that you're both going to enjoy and it's nice to not have to worry about whether the things are going to be appropriate for the ch children or not plus this is just a good it's just nice to see a game that doesn't require you to shoot various things or have so you know is so full of you know adult content which just isn't just not necessary all the time now this game really does emphasize the family fun their graphics are beautifully hand painted, the music is very soothing, it's very entertaining yet completely violent three. Therefore you know you can keep your kid happy or even yourself happy for a long time. Now they're saying this is going to be hours of play. Uh, it's great for even the youngest of children by all accounts. It's got some educational value although they haven't specified exactly what that is. There's absolutely no violence, there are numerous mini games. Uh, there is a quest map to keep track of the player's advance, so that would be great for younger players who might not quite know where they're going, what they're doing. And there are subtitles as an option, which could really help with younger children reading. Um, it's it might be a bit lighter on you know on the light side for uh, more mature gamers, but sometimes it's nice just to have something to switch off to. Please do go and have a look at it. Our third game today is Edron Trading Card Game or Edoron. Now this is, as you guessed, a trading card game much in the vein of Magic the Gathering. It's already been online for around five or six years. Uh, it's already won lots of awards. It's a free online trading game with around one and a half thousand unique cards to uh, play with. You can choose between eight classes or each with their own unique styles of play or you can even merge and create an ultimate multi-class deck. You can get free cards as you play, but you can also sell cards, trade cards, participate in tournaments, collecting achievements along the way. There are, there are you know, lots of different ways to improve your deck. You can battle against players around the world, or you can even fight for a single player campaign, which is great for an online game. Uh, 
Now, I know that you've already got things like Magic the Gathering out there, and you've also got Magic the Gathering online. However, they, they, they don't really do anything different, you know. Magic the Gathering 2013 was pretty much a carbon copy of Magic the Gathering 2012. It could have been DLC, but they decided to release a new game. Now, th these games haven't really done anything new in a long time, so it's great to see a bit of competition, because it's only with the competition where you'll actually see them maybe trying something new. So, by all means, give it a look. If you're into that sort of thing, definitely give a look. If you're not, but you're in, but you'd, you'd, you'd like to know more, then please do also have a look and uh, see if it might pique your interest. You never know, it might be an opportunity to finally get into something that you've never quite understood, but always would like to have understood a little bit more. Right, our fourth game today is Manos, The Hands of Fate. And oh no, oh no, another NES game. Yes, there are a lot of NES style games. There are a lot of people that feel the need to play, feel the need to play homage to games of yesteryear. And yes, nostalgia is a powerful, powerful feeling. However, a lot of those games do disappoint, but this game doesn't. Now, this this game has really captured what was great about those NES games, but it's not. It's more than that. It also takes a tongue-in-cheek look at action films of the 80s as well so you've got that double nostalgia effect there but you've also got a game that plays really well and it's a great storyline as well I mean of course the visuals aren't going to be great because it is NES style but the sounds are fantastic and the style that's there is good while while simple it is it is good and it's well done and it's been well thought out so yes I know it's a, yet another 8-bit style game but even if you are a little tired of the genre, do have a look. Um, it might bring something new to you which you haven't had from all these other pretenders out there. But I do understand that, yes, it's another one. But it's definitely worth... I think this could be the last one that's worth a look. Right, our fifth game today is Warsaw, or Warsaw. I'm not quite sure how that's pronounced. Now, this is a completely free first-person shooter. And it's pretty much an esports shooter. This is a game very much in the what, in the vein of Quake and Shoot Mania and such. Uh, lots of running around at fast speeds, lots of jumping about, lots of bright colours. Uh, this is this is made for one-on-one -on -one or or team-based battles. It's a you know a blend of skill and strategy. It's very very quick, very fast-paced, um, very skills-based. Everyone's going to be on an even pegging, you know, you've got no perk system here. This is just you and some other guys running around at full speed, trying to grab weapons when you can and trying to outwit each other and trying to learn the maps the best. Now, if you're into esports gaming, then you're going to enjoy this game. If you've not done any sort of esports gaming, then this could be a great entry for you. It's not going to cost anything to play for a start, it's free to play, plus it's a nice simple simple game plus you're going to be starting off at a level pegging with everyone else all right you're not might not if you've not done esports type gaming before in the past then you're not necessarily going to have the experience but you're all going to be coming to this game fresh so please if you've ever been interested in the esports genre then please do go check it out and if you've already been playing certain games like quake or used to play games like quake uh, then also give it a look because it might stir something in you that's been quiet for quite a while <laughs> Now our sixth and final game today is Iron Dawn. Now this caused me a little bit of grief because I wasn't sure whether to include this or not because the game is not actually finished yet. This game is still on Kickstarter. Now I wouldn't ordinarily include a Kickstarter game in the green light highlights episodes purely because if it's on Kickstarter, then by all, it doesn't entirely exist. You know, you could vote it onto Steam Greenlight. It could get into Steam, but the game might not actually, you know, the, the game may never actually come to fruition. If they don't get the backing and they don't get any sort of backing whatsoever in the future, then you've wasted your time looking at this game, trying to get it passed with Steam, and there was no game anyway. The reason I did put it in, because it's a style of game I enjoy, it's very much, it's a strategy game, very much in the style of XCOM. It's a really slick looking game. It looks like it's set in a real unique environment, much like um, game, again, you know, games like Dishonored. It's, it's its own sort of steampunk style setting that 
bring something new to the table, but whilst remaining familiar. Now, the style of game looks fantastic. The reason I have included it, despite reservations, is the fact that going by the footage and the screenshots they've presented, the game is in a pretty much near-finished state, which would suggest that the money they're after on Kickstarter would be more about finishing things off and about distribution and marketing. Now, if that's the case, then that's great because this is a great looking game. The only thing that worries me is they're not very close to their funding target. They've got quite a lot of time left, but maybe if more people like myself push the game and get more people interested in the game, then, then it will reach its target a little quicker. So by all means, that's Iron Dawn. Please do go and have a look at it. If you like the look of it, not only vote for it on green light, but please do go and have a look at the Kickstarter page and maybe share that as well. Right. That's all we have for you today. That's another six green light games for you to uh, look over. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video and the games, then please do like, comment, and subscribe. Also, if you've got any games that you would like us to look at, or if you've got any general feedback for us, then please do let us know. You can either leave us a comment on here, or send us a message, or you can even take a look at our Steam group, uh, for which a link will be provided down below. Uh, thank you very much again, and I'll see you all next time.